Today we're going to talk about sheep and we're going to continue on through Psalm 23, the, one of the most favorite psalms of all of us. But we're going to talk about one specific thing today where God says he leads his sheep beside still waters. How does that relate to us today? Join us to find out. Good morning, welcome to our Psalm series. Glad you're joining us today. Uh, we're working through Psalm 23 and we are doing it very, very slowly. So what I wanted to do was take it verse by verse by verse because there's so much meaning in this one particular Psalm, especially for those of us who follow Jesus. And it's really encouraging when we can start picturing ourselves as sheep and picturing God as our shepherd who leads us, who guides us. Now, this particular psalm is always linked to things like funerals, all right? It, it, people think of this psalm when someone dies, and yet it's actually not even about that at all. It's, it's about life, and it's about the ups and downs of life and how, how God leads us through it all. So last week, um, and the week before, we spent time on uh, verse 1, Psalm 23, 1, which is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, we talked then about how personal the Lord was to David and how he is to us. Uh, we were reminded that because he was the good shepherd that he's always going to take care of his needs. And then last week we talked about how God makes us lie down in green pastures. He settles us into these pastures. Um, and so today what I want to do is continue on and we're going to go with the next part of verse 2, which says this. He leads me beside still waters. Uh, he, he, he leads me beside quiet waters is another translation of that. Because this is actually what determines if a shepherd is good at his job. Because sheep have to have water. Uh, we've seen this in this picture I'll show you right here in Israel. It's hard to find water. There's not a lot of water there. So if a shepherd is going to take care of a sheep, he's going to have to spend a lot of time looking for really good watering holes because they're pretty far and few in between. But it's really interesting when it comes to sheep. There's actually three sources where sheep can get water. The first one is when the sheep wake up, there's dew on the grass first thing in the morning. And, and that can be where they get a lot of their water for, for their system. But it takes a really good shepherd to get up and meet the sheep right there to make sure that they're, that they're grazing. But if a shepherd is lazy, the sheep is not going to get the water that they need to start their day. Because sheep can actually go months without water if it takes in heavy dew every morning. But, it, but the shepherd has to be really diligent about that. Now, how does that work for us now. And I think it's really a good lesson for us, us as followers of Jesus because God has given us his word, the Bible, to nourish us as we wake up in the morning. We need to be spiritually fed and watered before our day starts. But in order for that to happen, we actually have to get up and open our Bible. Look at Psalm 143.8. Cause me to hear your loving kindness when? In the morning. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift my soul to you. This is first thing in the morning, just like a sheep gets his first dew first thing in the morning to sustain him through the day. Psalm 5.3, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. Mark 135, now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, Jesus, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. See, there's something about spending time the first thing in the morning to get spiritually hydrated to help us get through the rest of our day. There's something about sitting beside still waters in the morning being spiritually fed by God. Now, the second place that sheep get water are from deep wells. But deep wells take a lot of work for a shepherd. A lot of these wells are found in deep, deep, dark places where the shepherd has to go and prepare it for the sheep. 
And yet, as the sheep are being led down to the water, they're kind of terrified. Because as we, we're going to find out in the next couple lessons, they don't like it where it's dark and it's shadowy. But the same is true for us. We're all going to go through times in our life that, that feel scary. We get bad news from the doctor. The economy's failing. You can't make your house payment. You get fired. Whatever it is, sometimes we forget that our shepherd is working, even in the darkest places. But we forget that through its, his efforts that we're nourished and strengthened. Never forget that. That to spiritually grow in our faith, we need to do something about that. We need to spiritually drink. And sometimes it takes our, our shepherd to lead us to paths that feel really uncomfortable. But it's those places that we tend to seek more spiritual drink so that we can learn more about God and trust him more. The third place a sheep gets his water is by springs or, or streams or running water. These are streams fed by, by pure you know, snow that comes off the mountains. But it takes a really, really good shepherd to know the area where the streams are running the best. They have to know when the snow is melting in the mountains above. A good shepherd is always, always wary of, of, of rain and snow and, and the weather and what's happening around them because their sheep's lives depend upon it. But here's the thing about sheep and a running stream. Sheeps will not drink from running water. They're terrified. They're afraid of everything. And understandably, think about this. If a sheep falls in a running water stream, he's going to drown. His thick wool is not going to, you know, it's going to weight him down and he's going to die. So it's, it's no wonder they're terrified. So sheep are fearful of the water, which is why a shepherd has to take them by still waters to keep them calm. So that's what the shepherd's job to do. To, to get hydrated, to find the best places, to find the, the still waters like what's behind me. Sometimes that means a lot of work for the shepherd. Because sometimes he has to go in if the stream is running and he has to dam up the water, put rocks and make sure that, that there is a, a pool-like place that's, that's calm that the sheep will be able to drink in like this picture here. Because a good shepherd knows that for sheep to rest, they have to be fed in green pastures and they need to be led to still waters. So how does that relate to our life? Because we look at life and we go, oh, that sounds so nice, you know, green pastures and the still waters. My life should be peaceful. It's not. And neither was King David's. David's life, as, you know, I don't know when, at what point he wrote this particular Psalms, but David's life all through it was filled with chaos. He spent years and years running from King Saul. He was running from, from his son Absalom. People were always trying to kill him. His family was a dis dysfunctional mess. And David wrote this reminding us that we can feel satisfied amidst life's turmoil. Because we have a shepherd who knows the importance of leading us to still waters to drink. This was just a reminder that we need to drink spiritually. We need to sit by quiet waters daily to read our Bible, to pray. Why? Here's a picture to get hydrated spiritually. Sheep need to be hydrated. Us as God's sheep need to be spiritually hydrated. Because from the moment we wake up, it's like the sheep in the desert in Israel. They're heading out into the desert. For us, we don't know what the day holds for us, neither did the sheep. So we need to make sure that we're spiritually filled in times of still waters, in times of rest. So why? So we can be prepared that whatever comes our way that day, we can be focused on the shepherd, trusting him to take care of us all day long. Because if we sheep are always fearful and we're always looking around for the lions and the bears, always nervous because we don't know where we're going to get our next meal or our next drink, that just says a sheep has not spent enough time with a shepherd to know that he will take care of him. Make time for this. I cannot stress this enough. The more you spend time reading your Bible, the more you're going to get to know this shepherd. 
And then what happens is you just trust him. I don't know, he's my shepherd. He'll take care of it. And the less you will worry and fear and stress. I, I, I hear from people that say things like, you know, I'm so anxious about everything. And I feel like saying, ah, if you could just stop and rest and get to know your shepherd, you won't be fearful and worried and anxious because you know he's got this. He promises to take care of me. We have so much going on in our life lately. For us, we, we bought a new house. We've been trying to get our other house ready and get it on the market. Trying to get the other house ready to move into. We're doing this read through the Bible in a year discipleship group. There's tons of reading I have to do. I have to study to put lessons together each week, two lessons, and then I have to videotape and teach them on Wednesday. And, and lately, honestly, I feel serious effects of not being spiritually hydrated. It feels like I don't even have time to get up early and sit by still waters. And I can actually tell it in my life. Suddenly I'm worrying about things I used to never worry about. Suddenly I feel anxious about things I never used to feel anxious about. I feel more stressed today than I ever have. And I know it's because I'm not taking this pocket of time in the morning to get spiritually hydrated. I know that. Because like a sheep, when they're hydrated, you know what? They can lay down and go to sleep and relax. And the same goes for me. When I am spiritually hydrated, I relax. I trust God. I trust he's my shepherd. He's working all things for good. I can tell a big difference on how I think and how I act, my perspective on life, when I spend time drinking and getting spiritually hydrated by still waters. See, we can make it through anything when we know our shepherd really well. Just like Hurricane Florence, it's hard to think of being by still waters when there's a hurricane, but it's this powerful image in, that in great turbulence, we can be okay and feel okay. Here's what someone wrote in, in Myrtle Beach, there's a coffee shop that boarded up its windows with one board boldly proclaiming God is good. This is in the midst of a hurricane. How could someone say God is good when a huge hurricane was coming, forcing evacuation, making the coffee shop close its doors and threatening major destruction? The person who wrote that sign could do so for the same reason that David, in desperate circumstances, could say that the Lord leads us by still waters. It is because even in the midst of a storm, we can find strength and peace and life when we trust in God. On the sign at that coffee shop, there is a reference to Psalm 91, verses 1 through 16. The person who wrote on that board clearly intended that the person should look at Psalm 91, where you will find these words. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You will not fear the terror of by night or the destruction that wastes at noonday because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. When they call to me, says the Lord, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And that's the message of Psalm 23. That we can find still waters even through a storm. Now, the last point I want to make is this. We have a choice where we drink. We have a choice where we drink. God offers us really good things. He wants us to drink from his word where we're refreshed daily with, with this pure water of what he's telling us, where we can learn to, to walk in peace and joy and patience and kindness and trust. It's like a shepherd leading his flocks here. What's behind us here? Here's another picture. But the sad part is that some sheep don't want that. They want to go their own way. They want to drink from waters that are unhealthy and harmful. And what happens is they find streams like this. Streams that are filled with mud and manure and trash. And we can do the exact same thing if we're not careful. We can find disgusting rivers that we, we think will be satisfying, but in the long run, we drink from them and it will only make us sick. It's sometimes the muddy waters of porn, or addiction, or affairs, or cheating, or stealing, or anger, or bitterness. And in the end, those muddy waters are going to destroy us. 
It's that kind of water that gets sheep very, very sick, sometimes even to the point of death. I like this. There was a little lamb and his mother. They passed the pig pen every day. They were walking to the pasture, but the lamb looked longingly at the pigs wallowing in the mire and asked his mother if he could go play in the mud. She said, no, sheep don't wallow. But he would look over at those pigs in that mud. It looked like so much fun, and on the hot days, the mud looked nice and cool. But one day, when he was older, he let his mother go on a little bit, and they jumped over the fence, and he started playing in the mud. The cool mud on that hot day felt so good around his ankles, so we went in a little bit deeper. It got up on his belly, and it was cooling him off, but wool and mud don't mix very well. And it began to cake on his wool until he realized he was stuck and he couldn't get out. His pleasure had become his prison. He began to cry for help and finally the farmer came out and took him back to his pasture. And his mother reminded him, sheep don't wallow. Christians aren't supposed to wallow either. We're not supposed to wallow in the, the mire of sin, the, the muddy yuckiness of this world. It looks appealing, we get that. But remember where it leads. It traps, it, it addicts, it, it, it enslaves, it destroys. Look at 2 Peter 2.20, it says, If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and overcome, they're worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. Of them the Proverbs are true, a dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud. As a follower of Jesus, let's take this to heart. Let's not wallow in the mud, on muddy, ucky streams, that, and drinking water like that, instead of the, the water of the Word of God that God's saying, look, drink that and I will refresh you. The point for today's lesson is this. Psalm 23, 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. Why? So we can be refreshed with the good stuff. So we can pass by the dirty, mucky waters in, in in spending time with God himself, our shepherd. Because when we do that, we become different people. We become peaceful people, loving people, joyful people, and trusting people. And that's really the goal. But that doesn't happen if we don't spend time by the still waters in the morning getting to know our shepherd. Hope that helps. Have a really good day today.